Hi, this is Ashley Davis from helituning.com and today I'm looking at a build video for the T-Rex 600 EFL Pro which is Align's new 600 sized flyberless helicopter which is designed to run on a high voltage system uh, such as a 10S or 12S uh, setup. This is a high power model designed for high performance 3D flight as the box says there, it's the uh, 600 EFL Pro Super Combo. However, I'm not going to do a what's in the box video for this particular kit because uh, my kit actually isn't the Super Combo. Um, the, the part of the kit that I'm going to build uh, is the frame set uh, with the standard aligned motor. But uh, the electronics that I'm fitting to this machine are not those that come in the Super Combo. So it's, it's going to have a Scorpion ESC um, a V-bar flyballist system and the servos within it will be the BLS 351s on the cyclics and the BLS 251 on the tail. So uh, not quite your uh, usual 600 EFL Super Pro combo but nevertheless um, the build video really is is there to show you how to build the uh, the helicopter frame set um, and, uh, and set it up rather than uh, look at the details of the Align electronics that come with the kit. Okay, so uh, without further ado I'm going to move on to uh, the first part of the build which is the rotor head. Okay, so here we have the first part of our build which is the rotor head and as you can see this is actually pre-assembled but it's actually just very lightly put together. We do need to take these um, pre-assembled parts completely apart uh, and then reassemble them with Loctite and make sure that everything is done correctly. Um, don't take for granted that any screw that's been pre-built has been Loctited or in fact the parts inside have been assembled correctly. So I'm going to take this to pieces now and build up the parts as per the manual steps. Okay, so here we have the first step completed and that was just bolting this arm here with two screws with Loctite on into the grip itself and putting the ball into the end here again with Loctite on it and the same repeated for the other blade grip. Um, I've disassembled these from the main head block and also taken the bearings out so they don't fall out um, and we'll reinstall those bearings uh, shortly when we bolt these blade grips back onto the main head block. Okay, and now we are in fact at the point where we do want to install the blade grips onto the head block. Uh, what I'm showing you in here is that there's a radial bearing down inside there, and there's also a radial bearing on the other side there. Um, and basically we've got to put a thrust brace down in where that radial bearing is. Now the first thing that needs to go in there is a spacer that spaces the uh, thrust brace outer away from that radial bearing. Um, and that's got over here. Let's grab that. I'll show you that. Okay, so this is our uh, little uh, washer, and that's going to go in there. Let's put that in there. Okay, so you can see that down inside there. And then on top of that, our radial bit. Oh, sorry, our thrust brace goes. Uh, and the thrust brace uh, is marked. So there is uh, one that's marked in, which you may be able to see on, well, I hold it a little bit further away, but I see that's got in written on it. Uh, and that's the one that goes in first. So that one goes in there next, like that. And then on top of that goes our thrust brace. Let's just grab the thrust brace here. So if you look at the thrust brace, it has two sides to it. It has a closed side and an open side. And the open side goes down now what I'm going to do before I install this in here is actually put a bit more, uh, I'm going to pack the bearing with grease. Um, there's not a lot in there at the moment. But this one, just to show you how it goes, would go in next with the open side. That's going the wrong way. Going the right way, like that. So the open side is down and the closed side is up and you can see the closed side. Uh, and then on top of that, it goes to the uh, next part of the thrust race, which very helpfully has got, I'll hold it down again, got out written on it, 
and that goes in the next episode. So you can see the out written on it. And then the last thing to go in is our feathering spindle bolt and the washer. So bolt through the washer, like so, and then that goes in there and bolts it onto our head block, which I've got here. So effectively this piece, as it was pre-installed effectively, that will go onto there like so, and then we'll bolt it down using the, the screw. Now I'm going to clean this screw up and also clean up inside the feathering, feathering spindle in there as well, because you get some engineering grease in there normally, and also the screws themselves have engineering grease on them. So uh, I'm going to sort those out first before I bolt that on again with Loctite. Okay, so having installed those blade grips, it should look something like this. With everything installed, and your blade grips should rotate nice and freely. There shouldn't be any notchiness in them. They should turn very, very freely indeed. Um, just make sure that these are tightened up, but it's the Loctite that's holding them in, not how hard you crank them into the head. So you only need to do them up until they're you know, tight, and then the Loctite will hold them in. Okay, so the next step is bolting these anti-rotation down links onto the bottom of the rotor head. The only thing you really need to do here is to take this screw here out uh, and give its thread a clean so there isn't any engineering grease on it. And then you can put some Loctite on it and bolt both of, the, of these arms onto the bottom of the head block with the uh, line monocle facing outwards. Okay, so there we have both arms bolted on, and if I let them go, you can see they are completely free moving. There shouldn't be any stiffness to them at all, uh, and they go on like that. You can see. Okay, so on to the next step. Okay, so our next step is the swash plate. All of these balls on the swash plate aren't done up um, tightly, so they need, all need taking off, lock tightening, and then putting back on again. And then that's your swash plate completed. Okay, having assembled the swash plate, the next job is for us to get the main mast into the main head block. And uh, here we have the head block, main mast just inserts straight in there, like so. Then it's just a case of lining up the hole. Just, uh, there we are, like so. So we've got the hole lined up there, and then we can put our Jesus bolt and our nylock nut through there and lock it up. Now obviously one of the things we need to make sure that we've done before we put the main mast in is put the swash plate onto it. So I have the assembled swash plate here. So that will go through like so. So our swash plate is now on the mast. And then once that's on there, that can then be inserted into the head block and bolted in uh, as I just showed. Okay, so there we have the swash plate installed onto the shaft, and I just want to uh, point out that the downlinks here go onto the smaller, shorter balls on the centre of the swash plate, not the larger, bigger ones, which are for the link going up to the main blade grip. Uh, so that sits on there like so, and we're ready to install our main blade grip link um, and put on our um, head stopper as well um, on the top there uh, if you want to fit that. Some people don't like them uh, head stoppers but some people do so uh, really a matter of choice as to whether you fit that or not. Okay and here's the rotor head with the linkages for the main blade grip installed on each side and these are as per the manual so the distance between the plastic the link there and the plastic link there is 43 millimeters. Um, whether that will be correct or not for the V-bar system I'm fitting on this, I don't know because obviously these linkage lengths are probably designed for the 3GX system. Um, but uh, if I find out they're different, I'll uh, I'll let you know later for anybody who's planning on using a V-bar on the 600DFL. Okay, so that's uh, that step done. Uh, the next thing we move on to is uh, building up the mainframes. Thank <laughs> you.